On today's part of my take, we have a twofer for the people. Adam Morrison and IOC, Dean of the IOC, Dick Pound. Uh, We have NFL Top 100 running back debate, which is actually a really good one. We have a hot seat, cool throne. We're going to fix sports. We're going to do a Mount Flushmore of candy. We got a ton of show for you. And we're going to do it right now with the Cash App. Pardon My Take is brought to you by the Cash App. Not only is it the easiest place to send money to your friends, it's the safest. So go download it right now. You don't have to be handling any cash. You can send money to your friends without you touching that disgusting cash right now. And you can also use code Barstool. You get $10 for free. Use that to tip your favorite bartender, your favorite waitress, your favorite uh, person at a restaurant that may be struggling right now, the Cash App can do it easily. You just send it right to someone. You don't have to do some face-to-face interaction. This is the social distancing of cash transactions. That's what the Cash App does. And again, if you use code Barstool, you get $10 for free. That's $10 for free. There it is right in your Cash App. And $10 goes to ASPCA. It is that easy, so go download it right now. Download the Cash App from the App Store, Google Play Store today and get involved with the only social distancing cash app. Welcome to part of my take presented by the Cash App. What are you doing, Hank? Hank's putting the ones up. He's being Ray I keep Allen. Thinking he's thinking that I'm keep, Cash App background. But this, this is, is Paul Pierce. It's not. It's when I have my when there were mic issues. I keep thinking they're mic issues. No, we're good. We're good. <laughs> Welcome to part of my take presented by the Cash App. Go download it right now. Use code Parcel. You get ten dollars for free. Ten dollars to ASPCA. Today is Wednesday, April first. April Fool's Day, guys. We have no sports, and everything's canceled forever. And I know I'm not trying to be a bummer, but when Brian Windhorse broke the Chinese basketball news to me, that was a gut punch because here's, here's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm a calendar guy. I'm trying to figure out how we're going to get back into this thing. Chinese basketball, China is four months Around three months, uh, about, like ahead of us schedule wise, that means we aren't going to have sports. We're not going to be ready for sports at the very earliest, somewhere in June, July, and I don't think that's happening. So well, I don't know how time zones impressed. work. I think they're only like twelve hours ahead. At least when I was there, that's what the clock told me. I, I'm not. I'm just thinking that China doesn't want us to have basketball, so that's why they're postponing their own season. I, I think that there's plenty of room for negativity to be coming up later this summer. Just give me something off in the distance that I can look forward to. Give me a mirage that I can pull myself towards. Don't tell me that there's nothing out there. Allow me to be disappointed a little bit later. See, this is – I'm approaching this the exact opposite way. I have canceled sports for 2020, 2021, and possibly 2022, and anything that we get that comes sooner than that is a bonus. I'm not going to let myself get my heart broken over and over because here's the thing. I'm so stupid. I still think somehow they're going to play March Madness, and I have to just remove myself from that that thought and be like, "Listen, nothing's getting played forever." Like, not to be alarmist, but the world has ended well, and sports are over. Well, so that's not true. First of all, it's patently false, and mm-hmm. I can prove that it's false because we are getting a golfing showdown between Phil Mickelson and Tiger Woods, with maybe Tom Brady and Peyton Manning like playing doubles against each other. That would be awesome. I I think that like these celebrity golf things are are going to be the only thing that we're going to have to pull us through the springtime. We could do um, like any sport that's one-on-one with distance, like tennis is perfect. Mm -hmm. We could just get Federer, have Federer play against Nadal every single weekend for the next three months. PFT, the future of sports is everyone watching video games and then every three weeks or so, a closed set where Dana White has people beat the fuck out of each other. That's all we have. 
you're forgetting about the Brady versus Manning thing. That that's going to get canceled. I, I, I'm so like so I'm mania. dumb like you are, but it's going to be Manning against Brady. I don't care if it's not football. It's still in my, my in my brain. It's football they, because they just guys going at each other. They just created that event just so they can cancel it. I'm so, I, everyone's addicted to canceling shit now. It's fucking it's a joke. So I'm I am uh, listen. This is the this is I need you to calm down. No, no. This is how this is how you have to cope. You have to put your guardrails up. You have to not let yourself get hurt repeatedly because I know some people are saying, "Oh, we'll wait till May 1st and we'll figure it out." Just get this through your brain that we're never going to watch sports again. And then if they say, hey, guess what? We're going to play 10 games of baseball in fucking November. I'll be so pumped for that. I won't give a fuck. So that's where I'm going from. Like if they give me an MLS, if the Sounders play the fucking KC, whatever the hell they are in, uh, in, in December, I'm good with that. Because I've already set the expectation I'm never going to see live sports no. again. Stand down. Stand down, pessimist cat. Ne- negativity cat i'm i'm not going to be able to deal with like going through the entire rest of this year with no sports whatsoever it's just not it's not even an option in my head we're going to get sports exactly and, that's and why you're not, you're you know going to break your heart sports? again i don't care my heart my heart is calloused over seven times there's enough game of thrones for me to watch going into 2022 if i have to okay i've got a stockpile of content mm. that i can get into mm. there's going to the be way, sports wait wait hold on hold on sports. hold on is it weird though that you're watching game of thrones but you know exactly what happens because you watched the whole uh, season last season with us i watched the last season and the recaps and the full recaps will, that you talked about all the there, time the recaps were about 15 minutes long and every single clip was a second. So I don't know what the hell happens to any character. I, I vaguely remember what happens to like, uh, to Arya. I know what happens to Arya and the night King and all that stuff. I remember what happens to King's landing at the very end and the dragons and all that. Uh, but there's so many characters in that show that I, abs- I could not tell you what happens to the hound. I don't if know I, what happens to Khaleesi's boyfriend or whatever. If I can make a recommendation, PFT, you should just skip to the third season and watch mm-hmm. it three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two. Yes. Fast. That's, how, that's how true one, fans two. that's how true fans watch. Okay. All right. So, P- but, but but no, Big Cat, here's what I'm saying. Like there will be sports. We need to say out loud there will be sports. And no. you know why there will be sports? Because our good friend Mike Florio is going to ensure that there, there will be sports. He is Mike Florio is establishing emergency protocols. He wants the NFL to be run like the shadow government in case like New New York City and Washington DC is hit with a thermonuclear bomb where they fly all the important people out to West Virginia, put them in the Greenbrier in the hills and just have it be a self-contained your uh, coronavirus free football league. Okay, you're you're misunderstanding where I'm coming from. I want there to be sports. I want someone to solve it. I actually hated uh, I was watching I don't even know I was flipping through channels and I I landed on the Lebertard show on Monday and they were making fun of Jay Williams and his cruise idea. You shut up Lebertard show. Anyone who has innovation in this sports like trying to save sports is welcome to me. Like I Jay Williams, that idea is patently ridiculous, but I don't care because at least he's trying. So I'm down for people to try. I will help trying. I'll use my brain. I'll donate my brain to sports. I'm telling you what I'm saying right now is to set the expectations so you cannot continually get your heart broken. That's okay. where I'm coming from. I do not want to tell myself, again, I'm the person who still thinks they're going to play March Madness. I don't know how, but I feel like they could. So what I'm trying to do here is set the expectation at no sports ever again so that way anything I get, I am so, so excited about. Okay. As a DC sports fan, I've had my heart broken enough where I'm, it's calloused over already. I don't care if it continues to break my heart. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm just, I just need to have an illusion that there will be sports. But there are that's people all. out there who think that like May 1st, and we're going to have sports. No, like, that's not going to happen. Are you fucking crazy, man? That's just, not going to happen. Just, and I'm, stop. I'm with you on the like, yeah, let's get as many minds, as many weird ideas in this room as possible. I want it to be like, you remember in Apollo 13 when they were trying to figure out how to fit that square Mm -hmm. air filter into the circle plug and they just got all the nerds into a room and just dumped like coffee makers and shit onto a table. That's what America needs to be right now. We all need to be huddled in, in the back room of NASA, trying to contribute our ideas. No stupid ideas, no such thing as a bad idea. Just dump it all out there on the table. And I think we can make something happen. So Florio had the idea of putting all the, all the NFL teams in the Greenbrier, the one resort in West Virginia, making everybody live there for a year. Florio just People, wants to be able to cover the team from his backyard. Like that's, he that's a, a Flo- like, a, hey, hey, they should play the NFL. They should play the NFL season in, in Brooklyn. 
Yeah, Mike Florio just doesn't want to fly because he's afraid of it. Yes. And so it's actually a genius move on his part. But I don't hate the idea of whether it's the NBA or the NFL or any sport playing in like a self-contained area because you can double dip. You can get a little extra revenue. You turn it also into a reality show like the Ultimate Fighter. So you get cameras inside yes. the big houses – like every that's team, what, that's the big knocks. threes idea, dude. The entire league is on hard knocks, and that's so what, it's, it's that's, a bonus reality show and sports league at the same time. Like, let's. That's not a dumb idea. I know it's dude, a dumb idea, but it's not a dumb idea right no, now. PFT, no, PFT. The the big three is literally doing like, yes. trying trying to do exactly what you just said, dude. Jay Williams' idea is smart. It's stupid, but it's fucking smart. And he actually had a practical. The thing we need right now is everyone needs to start with a practical little kernel. So his little kernel was that Mickey Aarons, Aronson, the uh, co, the uh, owner of the Heat, owns Carnival Cruises. And you oh. start an Eastern Conference cruise and a Western Conference cruise. And you just fucking put the NBA out in the ocean for the next three months and let them hash it out. And everyone was mocking him. And I don't want to hear that shit because we need innovation. This is the Manhattan Project. This is the Manhattan yeah. Project to save sports. So everyone you- shut the fuck up, get in line, and figure out a way to give me a game. Because right now, you heard what I said at the start, I cancel sports till 2022. What is the Manhattan Project? The atomic bomb. It's uh, two shots of bourbon, one of sweet vermouth, some bitters on top, on the rocks, shaking. Boom, you're good. So I think that what we should do is let, let, let's just dump some ideas out there. Uh, underwater football, but it's in a bubble, like at the, at the bottom of the ocean. Okay. Uh, how about just going on to an island? Mm, I feel like you're going to want that ocean on top of you. No, you I think we're going to do – the NFL – Because if you go to the wrong no, island – the, the NFL actually should be looking at, like, island property right this second. They should be okay. looking wherever the fucking uh, Bahamas Bowls played, the Popeyes Bowl, when, when the MAC team goes there and scores, like, 100 points and, and the wind's blowing and there's, like, four people in the stadium, find that stadium wherever it is. I'm sure it's not hard because you can probably just Google it and set that up. Like, let's just play on an island. Fuck it. Go to Hawaii. Go back okay. to the Pro Bowl. I mean, if we're doing Manhattan Project, let's go to the Bikini Islands and let's go to the middle of the desert in New Mexico. Yes. I don't think that they've got an outbreak just there yet. Just play on former nuclear sites. How about that? That's actually perfect. I doubt the virus can exist in an environment where it's being bombarded by radiation all the time. They should play the NBA season. They, no one's in the hotels in Vegas right now. Just fucking take over one huge hotel and seal that thing off. Biodome that shit. Or mm-hmm. even better... Go to the Hoosiers gym in Indiana and watch everyone fucking – there's no three-pointers. And let's just go back in time, and we'll play basketball that way. I don't care. Like, you you take over a small town in Indiana, you could probably get away with, uh, you know, not having the coronavirus get in. Where where can the virus – where is it difficult for viruses to exist? In the heat? Mm -hmm. Is that what Uh, Fauci taught us? No. By the way, Fauci is a little bit of a clout chaser. Fauci is getting, yeah. Trump is getting <laughs> mad. But you, can, you can tell that Trump's getting mad because Fauci's becoming more popular than he is. So pretty soon, Trump's going to be like, Fauci's getting his ideas from me. What about, uh, what about playing it on a Navy ship? It's no well, different aircraft character. That's carrier. what I've been saying. Play Have Michigan it. State and fucking yeah. Memphis. Play week one in, in college basketball. And it's always so stupid because no one knows like how to, how to handicap a game that has wind and the, it's on an actual boat. But I don't care. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I'm fine with that. I've been fine. I've, I think that was the first suggestion that we had was to play the NCAA tournament on a variety of aircraft carriers. Mm-hmm. Bring the world together and have you all like contribute your military ships for the greater good. That, that would actually help solve world peace if we could just get all our militaries to collaborate together on sports. I or you just play some, them out like in a giant field with no out-of-bounds markers so everyone can practice distancing. It's Because here's the thing. It's going to be impossible. I, I saw that there was uh, talk of having NFL teams use like virtual reality headsets to do virtual walkthroughs and practices and stuff. That's not going to work. That's not going to work at all. I mean, the, I can see the draft working. Or another option, just give us, like, a bunch of drafts. Just do, like, seven drafts this year. The mm-hmm. year that there were no sports, only drafts. Bill O'Brien is going to kick ass at, at participating in drafts where he's not even allowed to have physical contact with the person. That's what sold him on Brock Osweiler. I, turn him around. I, I don't care. Whatever has to happen, they need to figure it out. And I'm sick. And I, this is my message to all the haters out there who say, like, this is a ridiculous idea. How could you be throwing these ideas out there when there's a pandemic? Listen, 
uh, we know that they're ridiculous ideas, but some of the one of these ideas is going to hit, and at some point, one of these leagues is going to be like, yeah, you know what? Let's move everyone to a remote island. Let's move everyone to a cruise ship. So the more like the more we get this into the mainstream talk that they need to start doing innovative things, the better. So keep doing that. And the one thing I will say that it, that like the one solace I take in all this is I'm pretty sure the SEC will play no matter what. Like the, the NFL could be canceled. College football would be canceled. Every sport would be canceled until 2021. And the SEC would be like, no, the show must go on. So I guess at least we have that. Nick Saban at the very least is going to be like, I'm going to be out there on Saturday. I, I'm going to be there. And he'll just go out on the sideline and expect his boys to follow him out. Like mm-hmm. Nick Saban, if you think that you're keeping Nick Saban in the house for an entire fall, buddy, you, you got another thing coming. All right. So someone fix sports for us. We're open to all ideas. Don't be a hater when people throw out uh, crazy ideas. They're not that crazy because guess what? We need sports back. We just need it. We need it. We need it. We need it. Moon golf. Moon golf works. Hit it fucking a million miles. Keeps going. Um, should we do the NFL 100, the running backs? Spicy Let's get one. mad about a list, yeah. All right, all right. So let me throw out there what they ended up with. They had 12 running backs on this list, 12, which is a lot. Um, I think what, what did we have – what did we do last week? What did we do uh, – what did we, we do last Tight ends. Week? Tight ends. Tight ends was only like five or six. So the running backs they have, they have pre-1970 running backs, Tim Brown, Marion Motley, Steve Van Buren, Lenny Moore, Earl Dutch Clark, and Gail Sayers. So that group, I don't even know what we do with that group. Sure. Jim Brown, let's just, obviously let's, number one. Let's go through it. Like, whatever. Who cares? I don't know. You know, Gail Sayers. I know Gail Sayers. I know Jim Brown. The other guy's like, okay, I'll take your word for it kind of thing. Uh, the six more recent, so 1970s on, Earl Campbell, Walter Payton, Barry Sanders, O.J. Simpson, Eric Dickerson, uh, right. Emmett Smith. Where do you want to start? Because I actually uh, have – I'm just going to get started by saying, like, O.J. Simpson, like, I get it, but, I mean, come on. You, you could have very easily not put O.J. Simpson on this list and nobody would have been like, hey, what the fuck? Why didn't you put O.J. Simpson on the list? I agree. He was the, he was the running back of the 70s, though. I know that because I just watched the documentary yesterday. Okay. He's a, so he, he was, he's a one he was the guy. guy. He was the guy. It would, be, it would be incorrect for them not to put him in there. He, he, I agree with you, PFT. I, don't, I, I, I could do without him. I also could do probably without Earl Campbell. And I have – I think Walter mm. Payton, Barry Sanders, Emmett Smith, and Eric Dickerson are pretty much locks in there. So if we're saying we're going to take Earl Campbell out and O.J. Simpson, and let's just say – I throw, would keep Earl Campbell. Okay, well, I, I disagree. I think, Okay, let's I, get into it. I think the three running backs that they totally missed and that uh, at least two – no, actually, I think all of them are better than Earl Campbell. Uh, Adrian Peterson should be in there. Agreed. LaDainian Tomlinson should be Agreed. in there, and Marshall Fox should be in there. Okay, those are the three that I had on my list as well uh, that you probably could I, – I also put Frank Gore. On that list, no. I had, but, I had Jamal Lewis as well. Wait, wait. Now, if you're gonna if you're gonna be a Jason Witten guy, you have to be a Frank wait, Gore. Guy. Hold on, Frank I Gore wasn't, is way. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. I wasn't a Jason Witten guy. I never said Jason Witten should be in the in the in the best uh, tight ends. I said he was in my third group or second group, the next group. So he you was said, never in my. You said I never. I, no, but remember, I put him after three other people. So he wasn't okay. even. I put him after Shannon Sharp. I put him after Ozzy Newsom, and I put him after. Uh, another person. So don't you also Jason Witten also was gonna, never in my in my even close to my top tight ends. He sounded like a Jason Witten stand. So you you also could have no. put Curtis Martin on this list. I thought um, Earl Campbell. I think Wait, Earl Campbell hold on. deserves to be on there. Hold on, go back to to Frank Gore. You and we're going to get to wide receivers. You want Larry Fitzgerald, who is also a compiler of stats. So where do you stand on that? I just don't like Jason Witten. I've been okay. very clear. all right. But I never said Jason Witten should be even close to the top five. I said he was just somewhere close. He was he was after three guys. I had three guys that were were better than him. What are you doing, mm-hmm. Hank? I think I think Hank's remembering this conversation a little bit differently. I oh my god! I had three guys that were ahead of Jason Witten, so he was the ninth best tight end. Okay, of all time, which is so that would yeah. I would have Frank Gore as maybe my ninth best running back. Of all time. So you would have him a, a above Walter Payton, Barry Sanders, uh, Adrian Peterson, Marshall Falk, LT, Eric Dickerson, 
uh, Jim Brown, Gail Sayers, all these other guys they have pre-1970? No disrespect to Earl Dutch Clark, but you only get one Earl per list. It's a rule that I just made up right now, but I feel like it's a good rule for this NFL 100. And Earl Campbell is the Earl that I'm going to go with well, you because can't- – I at least remember – I've seen him play, and he's a great player. He's a great college player, great NFL player. You saw that play where he put his head down and just ran that guy over. But we can't – in this list, we, I think we have to – unfortunately, the way they, like, compiled this list, they have six guys that are pre-1970. I don't think we can – like, we have to just go with their pre-1970 list. We have to – if we want to replace current running backs with the current running backs list, we can do that. But I don't think we can touch – because otherwise, I just eliminate everyone except Jim Brown and, and Gail Sayers from the pre 1970. You know what I mean? I'm fine like, with that. No, no, but I'm saying I don't think we can. T- I think to make it difficult, we cannot touch the pre 1970s list. How about this? We should be able to get rid of one of the guys. We, out of the group of Earl Dutch Clark, Marion Motley, who uh, the, the big takeaway about Marion Motley from the people that nominated him would said they said that offensively he was a blocker as much as he was a runner. All right, so we get so one I don't of know. them away. So, and so what's you your got list Marion then? Motley, and then you have Steve Van Buren, who okay, had so a total of 5,800 career rushing yards. All right, so pre-1970, you get to take away one. I agree with that. Now give me your list then of – so it would be give me your seven uh, 1970s and on list. Okay, so in that case, I'm going to go with Earl Campbell, Eric Dickerson, Walter Payton, Barry Sanders, Emmett Smith, Marshall Falk. That's six. How many do I get? One more? Yeah. LaDainian Tomlinson. That would be my list if I could get rid of one of them. Wait, you just don't, wait, you, did you say Barry Sanders? Yeah. Wait, well, say it again then. Earl okay, Campbell. Okay, my list. Earl Campbell, Eric Dickerson, Walter Payton, Barry Sanders, Emmett Smith, Marshall Falk, LT. Okay. So, so I, you I don't took have Adrian Peterson. Off. And you don't have Adrian Peterson. Ah, uh, shit. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Adrian Peterson See? actually coming. I'm taking Marshall Falk off, putting AP on. Okay. So I'll make the case that uh, it, my list would be um, Walter Payton, Barry Sanders, Eric Dickerson, Emmett Smith, Adrian Peterson, Marshall Falk, and LT. So I was looking through it. If you want to do Earl Campbell, who's like a power running back, Adrian Peterson, and you could make the argument that it's harder to be a runner in like this era of the NFL. Adrian Peterson had eight years over a thousand rushing yards, and one year he had nine seventy. That was he played twelve games. He tore his ACL. Uh, Earl Campbell had five years over thirteen hundred yards, and if you go their best year to best year, Adrian Peterson. Less than nine months after tearing his ACL, had 2,097 yards, 12 TDs. Earl Campbell had 1,934 yards, 13 TDs. I think Adrian Peterson's a better, longevity-wise as well, a better running back than Earl Campbell. I think so too, but I'm still keeping Earl Campbell on the list. And most of it, admittedly, is because of that cool play where he put his head down, ran the dude over, and then he got his jersey taken off as he was running forward. Because that's just a cool play. That's his Heisman moment for the NFL 100 list. I think Adrian Peterson should be on it. Peterson should be on it. Marshall Falk. I was looking through the Marshall Falk numbers. He had uh, he had 11 straight years over a thousand yards from scrimmage. Four straight uh, over 2,000 yards. And then in his uh, 2000 season, he had uh, 2,189 all-purpose yards, 26 touchdowns. And LT is the big, biggest travesty to me because LT. Going through LT's numbers, it's fucking insane. His peak was so ridiculous. He had eight seasons in a row with over 1,000 yards, at least 10 TDs, and then he had 100 catches in 2003, so he could do both. And then that 2006 season, I went through the game logs. I don't know. Like, Mm -hmm. There's probably some people who are listening who probably don't – I don't know how old you'd have to be. If you were – yeah, I mean, if you're if you're like twenty, if you, even if you're twenty five, what year would you be? Hank, what year were you born? Ninety three. I'm twenty six. Okay, so if you're like twenty two, you probably don't fully remember two thousand six Ladanian Tomlinson. So from week eight to week fifteen, I'm just gonna read the stats because they're fucking insane. This is like the old uh, the Barry Sanders like go through his or Jerry Rice fantasy stats. 
He had 240 all-purpose yards, three touchdowns, 192 all-purpose yards, three touchdowns, 158 all-purpose yards, four touchdowns, 179 yards, four touchdowns, 114 yards, two touchdowns, 192 yards, two touchdowns, 112 yards, three touchdowns, and 204 yards, two touchdowns. In eight weeks, the Chargers went 8-0, and he had 23 total touchdowns. That's pretty impressive. That's That's fucking insane. Yeah, was LT, was, L- LT very clearly should be on this list. I don't know why they devalued modern running backs because I don't care who you talk to. Adrian Peterson and Ladanian Tomlinson are probably two of the top four in the right. history. Of- and I don't, I don't, understand, I don't know why they left them off this list. I don't understand Adrian Peterson over – or Earl Campbell over Adrian Peterson when you stack them up and it's like Adrian Peterson did it for a lot longer. And not to mention, like, Adrian Peterson did lose a year of his career to, you know – the whole uh, off-field issue, which was a, 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 like still his peak. His peak, he, he like didn't peak. It's crazy to look at Adrian Peterson and be like, how did this guy do this? Like when he had – he had 1,000 yards last year, right, two years ago? A couple years ago, yeah. It's crazy. So yeah. I think he should be on the list. So that, that's, that was my biggest bone to pick. Take Earl Campbell, take O.J. Simpson off, and throw those three guys on. Now, are they putting anybody on this list that is a current NFL Network employee? Because maybe that was a conflict of interest type deal. For Marshall Falk? And uh, for LT. Doesn't LT contribute to them? Oh, he might be. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I just thought the whole thing, like, I actually got kind of mad looking at all the stats. And I was like, why aren't these guys on this list? This makes no sense to me. There were some no-brainers that, like, Walter Payton, Barry Sanders, Emmett Smith, like, absolute no-brainers. But when it comes to Adrian Peterson, LT, and, and uh, Marshall Falk, it's like, well, this makes no sense. These guys should all be on the list. Mm-hmm. I agree. So I think in hindsight, we, we basically agree on everything except for Earl, Earl Campbell. Right. You have and, Earl Campbell and I have him out. He only and, did yeah, it. He you had Gil Sayers. He didn't. I thought you said you took Earl Dutch Clark off. I did. Yeah. So you didn't have to take Gail Sayers off. No, I want to send a message. It, Gail Sayers was pre-1970. Yeah. Gail Sayers was a hell of a player. Um, yeah. I mean, Gail Sayers was kind of the... If you look, he he doesn't have the stats. He was the more like, what if he didn't get hurt? And like, yeah. what if he played in modern era and, and was able to recover from a knee injury? Yeah, he was like, if you've watched Reggie Bush's highlights in college, that's what Gail Sayers looked like. Right. He's He was like the tape pick where it's like the stats might not even come close to all these other guys. But if you watched the tape, you're like, this guy was just something out of control. He was cool. He was very cool. Also, the more I think about Earl Campbell, I think living in Austin – probably uh, is pushing me more towards wanting Earl on this list because the airport there, the bar is called Earl Campbell's. And so I, when I was waiting for my plane, I would have a couple tall, cold Earl Campbell's and have some good memories of that place. I'm not taking anything away from Earl Campbell. He's a hell of a running back. But if you're talking about like the longevity of Adrian Peterson, LT, and Marshall Falk, I think should count. And Earl Campbell was fantastic, but it was really a three-year peak, four-year peak. And, you know, his body kind of betrayed him. So I think that that's where I add the other three guys. I just think it's, it's kind of ridiculous to have somebody with 5,800 career rushing yards on the list of best running backs of all time. And then one guy that was like a better linebacker than he was a running back. Yeah, the pre 1970s shit. I mean, they're just doing it to be like, no one's going to argue with that because like, how could we? We don't know. And right. if Belichick says that like he Belichick probably has watched every single game of Steve Van Buren. I was actually, I actually thought that Marion Motley was a guy that Belichick just invented to see if anyone was paying attention because he was – Marion Motley sounds like he's what – he wanted uh, Rob Ninkovich to be, like a great linebacker and a serviceable running back. Yeah, and, and Belichick definitely could sneak one on and be like, yeah, I, watched, I used to watch this tape on uh, you know, my refrigerator with my dad, and everyone would be like, okay, sounds good, coach. Yeah, he's a four-time AAFC champion. Okay, yeah. cool. Yep, sounds good. <laughs> sounds perfect. Um, all right, it's good to get mad about a list. I, I, it's like all we have left. I, I actually get excited to look at these lists and be like, all right, where the fuck am I going to get mad about? Um, what are we going to do next week? Are we going to do QBs? You want to dive right into QBs? I don't know. It's going to be tough to like do like secondary and stuff. I don't really know how. I mean, I'm sure we got to do the we got to do the top. Let's do wide receivers. Let's do wide receivers. All right. Also, do wide receivers. Okay. Yeah. They also released their top 100 games, and that's that's the thing that got me the most upset. Okay, we can get mad about that too. What was their number one game? The Ice Bowl. 
I I don't even I forget. It was disgusting. <laughs> Probably that Chargers that uh, that overtime game in the playoffs, right? Kellen like Winslow. Peyton Manning breaks like a, the single season like regular season passing record. <laughs> <laughs> Drew Brees Monday night game, the the fifteenth one when he broke a record. By the way, I'm not even kidding. Like, there's like four of those in the top twenty. Have you seen Have you seen Sean Payton giving like fewer and fewer fucks as he gets older and older and goes on TV more? Like he he's going on TV on like first take and breaking news and just saying, yeah, Drew Brees is going to retire after this year casually. I think Dude. that he's just like when he when Sean Payton survives the coronavirus, he is going to be giving so many fewer fucks than he, he even was before. He's just going to go out there and be like. Uh, uh, Taysom Hill, you're going to do onside kicks and recover them yourself too. Like he's just going to go off the deep end. He tweeted it like he he just started tweeting his playbook the other night. It yeah. was sick. It was I I mean shout out Sean Payton. He's like in this with everyone else. He's like, what does it matter? We might never get this. We never may never get uh, sports back again. I'm just going to give you guys all my playbook. Right. He's going to have the uh, the Saints spray paint like the uh, Roger Goodell clown logo at center field or at at midfield. That's how that's how like old grandpa. I give no fuck. Sean Payton is getting right now. Love it. Need more of it. All right. Uh, let's do hot seat cool throne. Hot seat cool throne is brought to you by our friends at Bud Light Seltzer. Bud Light Seltzer reminds you that the cool throne until further notice is staying safe and staying at home. Order Bud Light Seltzer direct to your door through Drizzly and get $5 off for first-time users by using code PMT at checkout. Some restrictions apply. Delicious Bud Light Seltzer. Get it right now. Don't pack on those pounds when you're uh, all quarantined up, but do drink a delicious Bud Light Seltzer in the safety of your home. Hank, hot seat, cool throne. My hot seat is nerds. Mm. Ooh. I feel like during this this quarantine, like now all the NBA can do, they're starting to have NBA 2K leagues where all the players are just playing 2K, MLB is doing it. Everyone's getting into video games, and I feel like nerds have gotten their culture appropriated. Like there's no situation where all the nerds would start playing sports, but all the sports athletes are playing video games. And I'm sure like all the Call of Duty servers are full. Like it's kind of a shit show. So I'm sure the nerds are, are heated and upset. Yes. They, so they were here have, first. Yeah. I was born in the darkness. You merely inherited it. We're on their block. Exactly. Okay. Good one. Uh, and then my cool throne. This is kind of a cool throne hot in the streets. Uh, this is a new, the new, new hot thing on TikTok. All the kids are doing it. It's called being like being shy. This is just like, this is what, this is the new universal sign for being shy. Like that fingers together. Hank, it's a podcast. So you have to tell people what you're doing. And you just put your fingers together. Yeah, you, you point your two fingers together. Do you touch tips? Do you dock your index fingers? You do touch tips. Dude, and I it, love it's like the it's the new like, you know, like when you're being shy but you have to podcast and, and, and you just do this. I feel like Hank's Hank's doing something and making us do the signal and we don't really know what it means. Mm-hmm. No, no, it's it's I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I don't know what this means and I'm gonna stop. It doing means it right being now. shy. I do love all the uh all the fraud introverts that have to like live with this right now. You know, all the people are like, I'm actually an introvert. I don't really want to go out. It's like, now they're stuck with this. Like, yeah, let's mm-hmm. see how introverted you are. Motherfucker. Mm-hmm. That's always, that's always nice. I want to talk to one of those, the introvert extrovert people. Yeah. I'm going to take you out back and make you smoke a whole pack of being introverted. See how you like mm-hmm. it. Then. Exactly. Uh, PFT, what do you got? My Hank, explain to me what that is with the being shy. Touch I you, literally just did. I'll send you guys doing some something to it's, us. It's, it's no, it's it's uh, it's Hank's. I know it's, it's, Hank. It's I can dude. see it's, your brain working right now. We're gonna look like fools. You're gonna put like you're gonna add in like a little dancing bit emoji on my fingers, and you're gonna make me look like a jackass, Hank. No, I'm telling you, get on TikTok. You'll be viral as fuck. Just being like when you have to be shy, but you have to podcast. Okay. Oh yeah, he's actually. I am looking images for being shy, and those two fingers touching are that. Okay. <laughs> Uh, my hot seat. It also is, says you're down to be pegged. <laughs> okay, well that's what good. The fuck, yeah. Hank. I, that's you. You took it too far. <laughs> <laughs> you got too deep into Google. All right, what do you got, PFT? Uh, my hot seat's the rest of the world because USA Rugby is up for Chapter Eleven bankruptcy. So uh, I don't know what that means, but I think that it means that I can buy it, that I can bail it out, that. They can offload themselves onto me. Um, 
I don't know, because all my bankruptcy knowledge comes from either Wheel of Fortune or just the office gif when Michael's screaming, I declare bankruptcy. So I don't know what it means, but I feel like it means that I can purchase every single rugby team and event in the United States and then it becomes mine. Okay. Uh, so what's your first plan of action? Uh, first plan of action, every team gets a Pro Bowl linebacker from the NFL. But no, no, the rules, no, no, no. What's your first? Rule, I'm telling you, but the rules no. don't apply to them. No, no, no. You, you, like, first. First. Yeah, that's, you can't that's, commit a penalty. No, no, no. We're not, we're not talking about what you're going to do with the league. What's your first plan of action to actually get the we, league? We signed Tim Tebow. No, no, no. How are you going to How, how are you, gonna you get gonna, it? Gonna, yes. Uh, neon jerseys on, on okay. every team. Oh they look hard. Wait, wait. How am I, how am I going to get it? How are you yeah. going to acquire the league? I, I just told you I don't know how bankruptcy works, but I'm right. pretty sure I'm pretty sure it means like I can just bid fifty thousand dollars for the entire USA rugby. And if no if everyone else forgets to bid on it, then it becomes mine, right? So then you probably shouldn't talk about it. Yeah. I'm gonna dib fifty I'm gonna bid fifty one thousand. That's and then perfect. I'm then, buy I come it. In, then I come in second place and by the rules of rugby, I you win. win. Yeah. Thank I'm gonna you. buy it and then just disband it right away. So we and don't be there talk to, about it anymore. I'll be there to collect the sweet, sweet drippings from that. We'll fire everyone I don't out. I'm like the, the guys from Succession when they bought the fake dead spin, and I'm just going mean, to gut it. You're not going to gut it. It's impossible. Yeah, I'm going to gut, gut it. it. No, it's too gritty to be gutted. I, I think that I could make a good USA Rugby president. I just don't know how much it's going to cost, and I don't know how to run a league. Um, but it would be pretty cool to own an entire like organization like that, wouldn't it? Yeah, it'd be cool to win yeah, a lottery. Yeah, we try and get a sports team. It'd be cool to have sports back if we're yeah. talking about things that aren't realistic. That is realistic. How much do you, <laughs> how much do you think USA Rugby costs? Uh, I don't know. I have no fucking clue what, what it entails. Yes. I bet most people don't. So $10 million. I'm probably the only person to buy $10 million. It. Okay. Hey, I'm going to own USA Rugby. That's all I'm saying. My cool throne is bored NBA fans on Reddit. So if you think that Mike Greenberg comes up with some dumb rules and dumb theories, uh, you should check out NBA was it like NBA slash Reddit slash NBA? I don't know what it is. Anyways, uh, here's a great theory that somebody came out with just because they're bored and there's no basketball. Could an owner theoretically marry a player in order to circumvent the salary cap? It's actually mm. brilliant, isn't it? Yes, that is brilliant. I don't see any just, holes in that. I don't either. Um, Michael Jordan could probably adopt his son or you know, he could just have his son play if he was any good and just like write him more and more into the will every year. I feel like adoption wouldn't, is, isn't the same as marriage. Yeah. Why not? I don't know. I, I just feel it that way. Well, it's, it's someone it's, who's can not you in adopt a, Can you adopt a, like a, a grown adult? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You can. I think you can. It's not a dependent. Taxes. I don't know. Look at that. Know. Look at Hank. Tax Hank. I don't know how that works. That's pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> I think I think the hot seat cool throne is we do, PFT. You don't know how any of this stuff works, but your I ideas are there. That's that's my other cool throne is uh, <laughs> just saying in this economy because I've been saying it. Yes. I'm addicted to it. We're in a recession. Is back. That's big time back. You mm-hmm. can say that for everything. Does anything anyone says in this economy? Yeah, like no, come on, no, no way. We're in a recession, dude. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, so I I I think marrying. Are there any? Are there any female owners? I mean, I guess you could marry Jeannie like, Bus. Jeannie Bus, yeah, Jeannie yeah. Bus could. She probably did marry LeBron. Maybe she should adopt Bronny James Jr. before he turns eighteen. There, now there's what you do. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't see a problem with that. I think that you can, like, okay, so what if Bronny becomes a great player, and then LeBron just says, "I will add you into the will more and more every single year if you agree to sign with the Lakers." That and so, can happen, I think. Yeah, yeah. that can definitely so that, happen. That, that could happen. Like, uh, LeVar give Ball. LeBron, give LeBron. Oh, shit. I don't even want to say this out loud. Oh, no. Say it. Go it's off, that, King. It's that good of an idea. By the way, fuck LeBron for pretending that he brought the fucking Jordan doc out. Like, everyone knew it was coming. Literally. Everyone knew it was coming. Literally. I'm happy it's here, but I'm, everyone knew it was coming. He, some team needs to give LeBron equity, and then LeBron can do what we're saying and just pay LeBron less, and it's LeBron's son. Like, obviously, yeah. Bronny is taken care of. Shit. Well, I mean, LeBron could already do that with his son. And just right, like, but write him he in, needs like progressively interest. write him into the wheel. He could own a team. Below. That would actually be the most likely is LeBron owns a team and then just signs his son for nothing. And then LeBron Jr. kills his dad to get all the money. Yeah. He's kind of Shakespearean. Mm-hmm. Tiger but then he, he can't go to – he can't play in the games because he's in jail. No, OJ. He gets away with it, though. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've been watching okay. that. 
And but LeBron's dead. <laughs> I knew I could get you to say that. Oh. What about LeVar Ball? Since he's worth a billion dollars, he could probably write all his sons into the wall and have so much more money left over. Yeah, that's true. Billion dollar big baller brand. All right, my um, hot seat is podcasts. So podcast numbers are down. I read an article today. So it's just a reminder to everyone to subscribe, unsubscribe, rate it five star. We're going to do roasts on Friday. Let's do roasts on Friday. So oh, leave friend. a five star review and roast us. But yes, podcasts, turns out no one's commuting which is a good thing, but that's, that's when, when people, people listen to their, their podcasts. podcasts. And running so, yeah. in the gym and pretty much anywhere where they're not in their house. Right. I'm starting to listen to more podcasts as I fall asleep, even non-sleep related podcasts. Play each part of my take twice, once when you normally listen, and then a second time as you're falling asleep. Yes, yes. So podcasts are getting hurt. Um, we're actually fine. We actually had a meeting about it, but podcasts, I think the podcast bubble's coming for everyone. So we're just planning ahead here and telling everyone hey maybe do your part and make sure you tell everyone to subscribe to part of my take over and over and over tell all do your, your social distancing friends to subscribe to part of my take over and over um all right and then my cool throne is uh anyone who wasn't uh a part of my take didn't exist but so anyone who wasn't a stoolie in 2015 because uh tomorrow night or tonight they're replaying the Final Four and National Championship game from 2015 on CBS Sports. I've never watched the game on TV. I was at the game. Hank was right next to me. I'm going to live tweet Kentucky versus Wisconsin, and then I'm going to periscope Kentucky, uh, Wisconsin versus Duke, and I've never watched the game. So anyone who missed out on laughing at my dead corpse, we're going to do it all over again. It's going to be fucking great. little fun fact that, uh, I remembered earlier, Big Cat. Uh, you basically shamed me out of uh, wearing a Duke uh, yes. shirt to that game. Yes, yes, I did. You were like, you, you, like, are you here for work or are you here for, for Duke? I was like, well, <laughs> both. But And then it got in my head and I had to wear like a normal shirt. And afterwards I was like, wait, like, of I'll, course. What I'll the tweet fuck? out the rundown after. I mean, like it, that game meant everything to every – like that game was everything. I'll never get back to that point. You'll be back to that point a million times over. Unless. And that still stands true. So there's also a picture out there. Someone has it. I as I was walking out, I f I gave the finger to the Duke's like student section, like full on two birds out of just pure not funny, pure anger. I don't know if anyone has that picture, but tweeted at me. I was so so mad. And uh, yeah, it was a terrible night. So we're gonna relive it tomorrow night. So anyone who wasn't able to enjoy that the first go around, you Kentucky get game was great tomorrow. though. Kentucky game was I. Hank can attest, I, I didn't leave the bar after the Kentucky game for two days straight. I just was drunk for two days straight. And I, because I was like, I'll never be back in I'm this traveling. moment. I'd never so, be back in that moment. I think I speak for everybody out there that's listening that says that you should do Soggy Sorrows after the. Uh, after I mean, I'll the, probably start crying. It's a good point. So yeah. It's I'll, a good I'll point. probably start crying. Thanks, Hank. So Agreed. It will, yeah, it will probably, probably be Soggy Sorrows. Yeah. And get a cat. And get a cat. And get a cat. <laughs> um, all right. That is uh, – so that's tomorrow night. So tune in. It's going to suck. I've, I'm going to get so mad about the refs, Hank. Because you, have you ever rewatched it? No. No. Yeah. I'm going to get really mad. I'm going to make think, a fucking – I'm going to come out of that like Pepe Sylvia and just be like just a oh, huge corkboard of all the fucking calls. But you know they're going to have – it's going to be one of those things where they have obviously selectively like edited it. So they're going to like – it's going to oh, be Coach the K. controversial controversial call and it'll just skip to the next play like real quick. Yeah, Coach K probably had final cut on this on this broadcast for sure. Yeah, the, the, the Kentucky game was awesome though. Yes, it's – I still can't believe Wisconsin won that game, 38-1, and and, and Kentucky fans are still mad about it, which – It was so, it was so fair. I was I was uh, on a bachelor party that weekend in Key West, and I remember watching that game in the bar, and that uh, Monday championship game when I came back was one of the worst hangovers of my life, so I don't even remember watching the game. I was stone cold sober. I watched the entire thing, but my brain has just wiped clean that slate too. So I'll, I'll watch it. I'll watch it for the first time uh, just to enjoy you enjoying it. I, uh, I, I also remember I drove back that next day on that Tuesday morning back to Chicago with one of my best friends and we, it's like a three hour drive and we said not a single word to each other for on a three hour drive, not one single word. And it was just like it was misery. All right. Uh, let's get to our interviews. We've got Adam Morrison. Then we have uh, Dean of the IOC, Dick Pound. Uh, before we do that, you've heard the name from us before. Muggsy jeans are the only jeans we wear because they look like jeans but feel like sweatpants. That's no exaggeration. 
We don't know how the guys at Muggsy did it, but their jeans feel like sweatpants that had sex with even more comfortable sweatpants and somehow had an awesome jeans baby. I actually, I'm going to go off script real quick here. I've known these guys for a really long time. They're one of our first advertisers. They sent me probably one of their first pairs of jeans when it was just in the lab. And people have been saying, why are you wearing jeans during quarantine? Well, they don't realize I'm wearing my Muggsy jeans. So it's basically like wearing sweatpants, but I actually feel like a real human being every day. And like I have something to go, go to or someplace to be. Uh, so it keeps my sanity. That's what it is. Muggsy jeans is your sanity jeans during quarantine. Even better, Muggsy comes in a stylish fit that's not too baggy but not too tight so you somehow look even better than you feel. If you want to look good indoors for yourself or your partner, want to look for, good for your boss on that important Zoom call you have later, well, then you need to choose Muggsy. Muggsy jeans are sweeping the stoolie nation for good reason. Take our word for it. Give Muggsy jeans a try, and you won't be able to wear any other jeans again. Muggsy is so confident you'll love their jeans. They do free shipping and returns, so your comfort is 100% guaranteed. Do your legs a favor. Head to Muggsy.com. That's M-U-G-S-Y.com to check out Muggsy's full lineup of jeans and safe for work chinos, including new sizes and styles. Use code PMT for $10 off. That's a beer on us and a pair of the most comfortable men's jeans ever made by heading to Muggsy.com using code PMT. Okay, here he is, Adam Morrison. Okay, we now welcome on one of our longtime friends, recurring guests. This is actually... Part of the lockdown, we've kind of been going back in time, and you are one of our first big guests that helped us break through. It is Adam Morrison calling us from his apocalypse bunker. Uh, Adam, how are you doing? First of all, like we were talking, we were texting a week ago, and um, obviously with diabetes, that's a that's an underlying health condition. So you're taking obviously this very seriously. But how how is it out there being? you know, on lockdown and seeing everything that's going down. It's all right. I mean, I self quarantine. I was in Vegas for, uh, you know, the WCC tournament calling those games. So I, I haven't left the house pretty much since I got back. And then, you know, the governor of the state uh, did the mandatory lockdown. I think it was three days ago. So, um, you know, it's kind of weird. I think everybody's going through their own little deal, but yeah, you know, type one diabetes has it a little bit scary for me. Um, just trying to be out in public so i've been avoiding it at all costs but uh yeah just like everybody else man just kind of in shock of just how much this has uh, affected everyday life do you prefer to be introduced as two-time nba champion adam morrison did mm -hmm. we drop the ball on that one no not at all uh i i handed out water and uh, towels and stuff during that time so i could let that one slide but uh no no thanks i think i think recurring guest old time friend and guy who helped us put us on on the map is also the creator of part in my take yeah, adam pretty much I, i'll take that uh, i'll take that one but you guys have also uh, you know done all the work but yeah i appreciate it but uh yeah the two-time nba champion one uh you know i i i appreciate it but also i'm not a narcissist or anything like that so uh just uh, adam's fine all right so so let's do a little quick history lesson for maybe some uh newer awls because this was literally like the second or third month we had Kyle Wilcher on the show right before Gonzaga played in the tournament and he just happened to drop the fact that maybe not be as a fact that Adam Morrison has an apocalypse bunker in his house and you came on after we cleared it up but now would be a pretty cool time to have an apocalypse bunker wouldn't you say yeah yeah <laughs> it's it's more or less a, a regulated gun room by the state i have to have everything locked up so yeah but it's not uh it's not an underground bunker or anything but uh according to the law i have to have everything locked properly so i do how long could you survive in that room if like hypothetically you accidentally <laughs> got locked in there uh not very long i don't have like uh sanitation or you know i didn't panic by toilet paper and all that stuff like everybody did uh like I said, it's just a, uh, you know, it's just a room uh, that's got a locked door on it. And then I got, you know, gun safes that I keep, uh, you know, stuff that I have to. It's by the law and stuff. So, um, but yeah, it uh, it would make sense now to kind of have one. But, uh, yes, yeah. big time. In retrospect, yeah. So obviously there are more important things going on, more, uh, there's there's a lot of things that are be taken away from people right now. 
uh, their livelihoods, their you know their jobs, their social lives, all that stuff. But I have to also imagine that there's like a, a little part of you that is extremely disappointed that it sounds like Rage Against the Machines tour might be postponed for a long time. I was actually, I had tickets to the Portland show and I got general admission ones, so yeah, I'm pretty disappointed. But I've seen them twice. Um, I saw them at Coachella 07 and I saw them at uh, the LA Rising and I, I had a relationship with Tom Murillo for a while and I got to meet him a couple of times. I used to get him Laker tickets and I've met uh, Zach De La Roca at the LA Rising. So I'm pretty fortunate, uh, but yeah, it, it sucks because um, they're a band that you can't go see at the casino, you know, when they're 65. So it's kind of like to the point of, yeah. that you got to see them now uh, when there's still energy behind it. So, uh, yeah, it's, that's that's one of the minor things, obviously, like you mentioned. But uh, they're they're unbelievable live if you've never seen them. All right. So the other minor thing, um, we got to talk a little Gonzaga hoops. I looking at, the, I mean, the, the NCAA field was so wide open this year, and Gonzaga definitely was one of those teams that they, they were going to get a one seed. It felt like this was going to be a year where they're going to make a deep run. Um, what being around the team and seeing that, like, do you think that this this team had the makeup to make that deep run? And how disappointing was it, like, talking to all the guys afterwards? Well, I think, um, you know, obviously I call all the games, so yeah, I've, I've seen them from the, the start of the season, obviously to the end. I think they had, you know, the lineup um, to at least get past the first weekend for sure, and 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 we were slotted probably to be in Spokane as well as one of the sites, which is crazy. Um, we were going to be a number one seed and then be in Spokane. Um, but I think uh, all honesty, they had, uh, you know, a really good chance to make a final four. Uh, you know, you know how it is with the NCAA tournament, but the, the matchups, the draws matter. Um, we lack depth, but we also had, um, you know, a lot of experience in the backcourt. Um, we had, um, pretty balanced scoring. We're the, uh, I think we were number one in, the, in, in team scoring in points uh, per game or, or scoring margin. So we had all the talent, but again, it's it literally kind of a coin flip once you get past the, the first weekend. Um, but I, I definitely think they could have uh, at least been a Final Four team, uh, um, you know, Shit. if everything went right. And then you never know what can happen from them. But it's it feels so ancillary talking about hoops now because it's just like, well, what if? And now, like you said, everybody's just worried about what the fuck's going to happen next, and it's just literally day to day. Um, so yeah, I haven't really haven't put much thought into it to be honest because we landed from the WCC tournament, and they had the, no fans, so everybody was pissed in Spokane, and then literally the next day it was like fucking no tournament. It was just it's been it's been crazy on that that front, obviously. I don't know, man. This is this shit's bananas. So, did you guys actually play in any games in that tournament before they canceled? Yeah, they no won fans? it because they played. We, early. Yeah, we won the tournament, and I was a little bit nervous going to it. I had a birdie in my ear telling me this Corona shit's going to get worse. Uh. Um, so I was a little bit uh, scared to to get on a plane. Then you know, so I went down there. And it was the first time I never gambled. I didn't do anything. I went to my room. I barely went out. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, it just it was an eerie feeling because I, right when the tournament ended is when, you know, the Big Ten canceled theirs, ACC canceled theirs. So then you're sitting there like, well, fuck, this is real. And I was just in an arena every night for, you know, two nights yeah. in a row. I went to the UFC fight actually too. And I was like, fuck, I was just in an arena with, you know, 20,000 people that could have it. And it's it's been crazy just sort of thinking of that, um, you know. So, yeah, I, I, a lot of people were nervous down there before it even uh, was announced. Just talking to the other staff, other you guys, when we were doing the, the elbow bumps and the, the finger points and all that shit, like, even in the media room, I didn't want to touch it. It's just, it's been crazy ever right. since, obviously. Too. So, so when you were calling those games, could, was it weird knowing that like the players on the court could probably hear what you were saying because there were no, you know, obviously no crowd noise or anything like that. Oh no, we had fans. No, there was fans in the in the arena. Oh, that was the last yeah. tournament. They run it early, okay, yeah, gotcha. early yeah, in the week. The last conference tournament. Yeah, the the WCC was probably the last one that completed. Yes. Um, and, and then everybody did the no fans, and then just right after that, you know, I think what they play only one game of the Big Ten tournament, then canceled it or whatever. So, mm -hmm. um, I don't know. It's it's just been really weird. Um, 
sports wise. I mean, what the fuck do you guys even talk about? Uh, Apocalypse you know, as... Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We just get weird with it. We just uh, we our brains go to dangerous places. We are doing like kind of a memory lane too, having some of our old time recurring guests on because it's like this is back to when we do Skype and all that stuff, and it's uh, yeah. it's weird. Yeah, it is a weird weird time. Um, I had one last question. I don't know if I've asked you this. But do you still? No, obviously not right now. But do you still play pickup hoops uh, when the world is normal? Uh, I don't. I shit. I coach my daughter's basketball team. I obviously call games. Um, so I get my cup filled in that regards. I, you know, what I'm scared of is getting like an Achilles tear or something. I know I was uh, like you pussy or something like that. But uh, like I tore an ACL in the NBA and re- re- the me imagining rehabbing for no reason after that would, would just be the worst thing ever. So I don't do shit. Uh, I, the last time I played was I played back to the basket one-on-one with uh, Jonathan Williams. who played in the league for a little bit. I got Zag and another kid and I drew up walking to my car in the parking lot afterwards <laughs> and we didn't even do it was back to the basket. I mean, I, I fucking, I'm soft as tissue paper right now, so I couldn't even go up and down. It would be sick though if you just showed up to a YMCA wearing like yeah. a, I don't like a, a very loose fitting Heather Gray Russell Athletic T shirt and like some really short blue athletic shorts and, and New Balances and just pretended like you didn't know what you were doing but you were just wet yeah. from three yeah three point line to three point line yeah I, I could do I could still shoot jumpers I know that but like I said my wind is fucking awful and like my hamstrings hurt fucking walking up the stairs so I don't even know what I could do. Damn. right now but yeah no hoops for me man no up and down i need that i i just always think about like retired athletes like how awesome it would be to just go and dominate people you just strap on some rec specs you might not even need the rec specs but yeah. it just kind of completes the look yeah john stockton has a he lives in town and he has a sunday league that's pretty good and really he gives me shit every time i see him um because he still plays and he's still good obviously but i'm always like john i just i, I no thanks, man. But he's always called me a pussy, and you know, in a nice way. But yeah, he still plays. And there's guys that played in Europe and stuff that play in it. So I could, if I wanted to. That's the only way I would do it: is play with guys that played before. I love you know that. How it is. I, I, I love that John Stockton is getting mad at people for not showing up to his game because he just wants to feed you assists. Yeah, and he's like, "Got you, <laughs> pussy. Show up to a game so I can I can hand you the rock and get you 18 points." He he used to come to our Gonzaga practices when I was a freshman, and he was I think it was about five or six years out the league. He'd ride a ten speed. He'd have his shoes on with his socks and his short shorts. And John never stretched. I don't think anybody ever knew that. Like never didn't believe in it. And he would warm up. He'd go up and down maybe twice with a basketball, and then he'd be like, "All right, let's go," and just bust everybody's ass. It was unbelievable. Oh I mean, my it's god! Like five years after he retired. That's yeah. incredible. It was, it was incredible. He. He had this doctor in Utah. I, I visited him one time after him. I did, I did like this weird chiropractic shit and you like held pills in your hand and did like squats and stuff. And it was like a Rolf or some, I don't know what it was, but it worked for John. But like he never stretched, never did any of that shit. I think he played 16 years without missing a game. So I have that for science, I guess. For yeah. Stretching. John Stockton never stretched. Um, all right, man. Well, take care of yourself and hopefully we see you sooner than later because that would mean sports are back. And uh, yeah. we'll talk soon. Yeah, guys, you too. Stay safe, man. Be safe. That interview with Adam Morrison was brought to you by CBDMD. Our good friends at CBDMD are helping us out because the question on many people's minds is still, what the hell am I going to do without sports? But don't freak out because our CBDMD friends have the answer. It's hibernation. And thanks to their award-winning sleep formula, Getting a full month of sleep has never been easier. I actually tried the CBD PM stuff last night. Slept like a log. I slept like a baby. It was an incredible night's sleep, and I'm sure it's because I took CBD PM. It's got 500 milligrams of high-quality CBD, and it blends it with melatonin, valerian root, chamomile. Valerian root, is is that something that's in Game of Thrones, Hank? Yes. Ah, that might be Harry Potter. Valerian, Valerian, Valerian steel. steel. Valerian steel is the uh, – that's the good shit. Okay, yeah. So Valerian root is what you get when you cut a tree down with Valerian steel and you mix it with melatonin and CBD and chamomile and other sleep-promoting ingredients, and it creates a powerful and effective sleep aid. The CBD PM soft gels contain the same award-winning formula as CBD PM 
It's in a quick and convenient soft gel capsule to help you get the deeper sleep that you deserve. I love CBD PM. Again, I tried it last night for the very first time. It worked wonders, put me right to bed. To make it easier to sleep through a global pandemic, CBD MD is offering our listeners 25% off your next order when you use the promo code TAKE at checkout. Once again, cbdmd.com, promo code TAKE for 25% off your purchase of superior CBD products from CBD MD. I remember the first time I ever tried CBD. I had I was suffering from very bad Sunday scaries, tried CBD, took them right away. Evened me out, kept me nice and steady, took away some of that anxiety. It'll help you out to try cbdmd.com, promo code TAKE for 25% off. And now, Dick Pound. And now for something completely different. Okay, we now welcome on a very special guest. It is the longest serving active member of the IOC. He was once the VP of the IOC. He also was the first president of the World Anti-Doping Agency. It is Dick Pound. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, We have a lot of questions. Obviously, we're trying to figure out where to go with coronavirus taking away sports and what stories to cover. And we thought you'd be great to have on because – just last week, the Olympics got postponed for a year. So let's start there. Let's start with the decision-making process behind that. What was that uh, the last like few weeks before you officially suspended it like? And what were the different alternatives that the IOC was discussing on how they could maybe get the games to be played this year? Well, the, the, the alternatives were to carry on with the July 24th start if it looked like the the virus was being sufficiently contained and that the, the curve was, you know, rounding out. Uh, that clearly wasn't happening. So your other two alternatives are cancellation, which is something that the IOC is entitled to do if it's concerned about the safety of uh, participants. And I mean, up to now, it's always been because of wars. We've never had this particular uh, threat. Although, you know, we had it before Rio, the Zika virus is going to end life as we knew it, but it was largely a, a manufactured crisis and uh, never never happened. But this this is uh, of, of a different order. And then the the other alternative, if you can make it happen, is uh, is to postpone, and and that's the sort of the middle ground that we we were looking at. It took a while to get there because. Well, you can, you can unilaterally cancel if you're the IOC. You can't unilaterally postpone. You need to get your, your partners, the organizing uh, committee and, and the, the Japanese government, uh, to come to the same conclusion, which they did. And then when we checked with uh, the uh, World Health Organization, they said, look, this curve is, is going up. It's not coming down. So we said, all right, it doesn't look like a, a July 24th start will work. Will a postponement work? Yes, that would work. Uh, are the Japanese willing to do it? Yes, it turned out that they were. And then you have to pick a date so you can stick a pin uh, on a start date, and then everybody rejigs the the many, many conclusions and deadlines and opportunities and obligations uh, to meet the new date. And that's where we are now. Hmm. Don, did, did it rub you the wrong way at all going through the process? It seemed like uh, the International Olympic Committee um, was putting out signals saying, okay, we very clearly need to postpone, we need to postpone. And uh, the host committee, they seemed to drag their feet on it a little bit, especially towards the end there. Did you have to put any pressure on them to, to help them reach that same conclusion? Not so much pressure as saying, uh, look, we're, we're delighted that you seem to have a, a reasonable handle on things in Japan. But if you look around the world, uh, the risk is if you uh, persist with a July 24, 2020 date, you throw this big party and nobody can come to it because they can't travel and then they haven't had a chance to practice and so on. And that would be that would be a worse alternative uh, for you than a postponement. And um, a cancellation just puts uh, everything uh, in in the in the trash bin because nothing happens and so from the japanese they've got all that investment on which there's no return and as far as the olympic athletes are concerned a whole generation of olympic athletes gets thrown into the, the dust pile too so postponement was the right answer 
so what I'm curious about is when I, I don't really understand or I don't follow how all the teams get made uh, in the Olympic process, but were there any teams that were already decided? And then what happens to the athletes that potentially made the team, made these Olympics? Do they automatically make the next ones? Or is it just country to country? They have to decide their own uh, you know, decision, who's on the team, who's going to be competing in the 2020, now 2021 Olympics. Yeah, it depends to some degree on the sport. In, in, in some sports, you, you qualify by team. You know, the United States is entitled to enter a team. Canada is entitled to enter a team. What the mix of the, of the players on the team it can be determined you know, right up until games time, practically. In other sports where you, you qualify on the basis of time or, or finish in the world championships or whatever the particular sport uh, decides, it, it looks like the international sports federations have said, look, if you qualified already, on that basis, you retain your qualification. And if, if you haven't, then you, you go into the, whatever the, the, the qualification process will be for, the, for a 2021 event. And it's, it, it's, it's kind of an interesting call on the part of some of the sports federations because normally it's, it's the best athletes in, in every sport that, that get onto the, the team, like in the United States, if you win the trials, you're in mm-hmm. here, you know, it, it's hard to stay at the top. So you might've been king of the mountain in 2020. And by the time you get to 2021, there's some young stud that's making you look like, uh, you know, yesterday's uh, newspaper. And mm-hmm. so there'll be some, some friction in there in some sports, but, but that's generally it's a sport by sport determination. I imagine that you have to deal with a lot of friction from from various uh, bodies, whether that's uh, you know the host committees or, or the different uh, countries out there that you're dealing with. Um, was this decision? Did you get any blowback from it? No, I think everybody when it was, when the decision was made was relieved. I mean, I think mm-hmm. everybody was being compelled to the conclusion that July 2020 wasn't going to work. And then you, what you do, you have your fingers crossed saying that hope these old guys on the IOC don't cancel the games or something like that. And so the fact that it was A, postponed, and B, that we settled on a date pretty quickly so that everybody can match their training schedules and the peaking and all that sort of stuff uh, with what the, they have now, 16 months notice. Uh, I, I think everyone's satisfied that that was the right decision. Uh, so I'm also curious in your history, uh, against the anti-doping and you have been at the forefront. Like I said, at the start, you were the first president of, uh, the anti-doping agency and you've had a lot of run-ins with the Olympic sports, the IOC testing. Uh, First question is, were you not a fan of nineties, late nineties, early two thousands baseball? Were you not a fan of that? No, Because that seems like. That's a tough time. Like, I get what you're saying, that we should have anti-doping, but that was pretty awesome with all the home runs. Oh, yeah. No, there's no no question about it. When you you got guys, you know, 36-year-old year old guys hitting balls, they're still rising as they leave the property. Something is going on, and it's it's not mom's oatmeal porridge. And so, I, no, I was a... I was on baseball's case uh, for a long time, and, and they've, to their credit, they've eventually change things it's harder it's harder in the professional leagues because the, the rules are really set in accordance with the the collective bargaining agreements rather than international uh, standards that apply across uh, all countries in the world so it's harder to bring about a change uh, i think our breakthrough there was to say to the, uh, the players association folks listen why why is it that you're spending all your time and energy defending guys you know are doping and you know, with salary caps and things like that, uh, they're getting paid handsomely uh, at the expense of players, say, in the infield or something like that, that are as good as or better and are not all doped up. So why, why have you got your priorities uh, right or not? And I think that penny eventually dropped and they became much more amenable to uh, a more, more robust uh, program than they ever had before. And my second question would be, 
how much of a issue is steroids in today's Olympics in today's professional sports? Do you think that we're at a time where it's better than it's ever been, or is it still something that you see as a huge problem across the board? Still, still a huge problem. The the, the progress we've made is is that uh, we're much more able to detect uh, the use of steroids than in the sort of late eighties and early nineties and so forth. So if you're on a, a steroid and you get tested, you'll get caught. The big problem is to be able to find the athletes every day and figure out, you, you have to sort of reverse engineer this. If you're going to be the weightlifting gold medalist in, in uh, the Olympics, uh, what are you likely to be taking? Some kind of a steroid or, or cocktail involving steroids. When are you likely to be doing it? And then we got to be able to find you during that window because if you get through the window, um, the steroids are out of your system in, in the sense of being detectable, but you've got the benefit uh, of a, a steroid program, which can last you four, maybe five years. So it's, it's kind of a cat and mouse exercise. Yeah, and I, I saw um, the documentary, and I, I followed your career a little bit here, and you were not afraid to insert yourself into like the Russian body, their governing bodies, uh, and kind of take them head on. Uh, was there ever any point where you were like a little bit afraid, like maybe I should, you know, back off a little bit here? Uh, no, I mean, once you've jumped down the, uh, the, uh, the hole, you, you got to go right to the end of it. I, I'm not sure I would be uh, be a, a, a big Russian tourist these days, but uh, I think I could probably get a, an entrance visa, but perhaps not an exit visa from there. But no, you just do, you do what you have to do and, uh, the chips will fall where they may. I mean, basically, if I get a bad cold, it'll get blamed on Russia. So, yeah. Where's your uh, feud with Lance Armstrong now? Because I know you had a, a pretty public one with with Lance back in the day. Even though you never n mentioned his name, I read that that you didn't ever actually name him, and he just assumed you were talking about him. Where's that stand today? Has he ever reached out or said like, "Hey, maybe I was wrong. Maybe I did too all those drugs," or is it still a simmering feud? Well, he he's, he has acknowledged that, that throughout his professional career he was he was uh, doing this, and in, in those days, you know, we're talking '96 or something like that to, to th 2000 and change. It, it, if you won the Tour de France, you, you pretty well had to be on steroids. If you win it seven times in a row, uh, you know, hello, and that's what. Uh, eventually, we we tracked him down and I must say the the US anti-doping agency did a good job in in not getting run off uh, as, as the criminal authorities did they, they preferred not to have charges uh, uh, against him for that but they, they said well that's fine uh, you, you may not be charged criminally but as far as we're concerned we think you were doping we're going to assert a doping case and um, eventually plans blinked and um, walked away from the arbitration proceedings. And so he got this life ban in some sports and, and a significant ban for uh, other sports as well. Right, right. Now, do you have anyone that works for you who is like a, uh, almost like a catch me if you can situation where, you know, to, to catch a doper, you have to think like a doper. So you go out and you, you recruit somebody that has done something in the past to be on the good guy's side. Yeah, I, I, I was when I was uh, president of WADA, there, there was a guy called Victor Conte who was with the Balco. You remember that? Mm -hmm. designer, Barry Bonds. Designer yeah. steroids. And, and I thought, uh, unfortunately, it was near the end of my term. I thought, here's a guy who does know what's going on. And if you can build a relationship of, of trust with him, uh, he can probably point you in the right direction and, and even identify the bad coaches and uh, what's being taken, when is it being taken, where is it coming from, who are the suppliers, all that sort of stuff. But my successor thought of him just as a crook and, and not worth talking to. I say, no, you got to use what sources you can. And, and you know, whistleblowers and informants are, are frankly, a, a better source of, uh, of information than trying to be lucky enough to catch somebody peeing into a bottle on the right day. What's your more of a light question? What's your favorite Olympic sport that maybe we don't? I mean, you obviously were a swimmer, but what's your favorite Olympic sport, summer and winter, that uh, you always are looking forward to? Well, it, it was interesting. I, I many years ago was the uh, assistant chief of our the Canadian delegation in Munich, 
and in those days, my job was to go and watch Canadians in, in the preliminaries of uh, events because we didn't get to too many finals. But um, when, when I came back from Munich, the next games were in Montreal, and all my friends were saying, uh, you know, what, what tickets should we get? You know, should we get swimming? Should we get gymnastics? And, you know, things like that. I said, volleyball. And they're saying, volleyball? And I said, trust me, volleyball in the Olympics is not like what you thought you were playing in school. And, and I think uh, probably in Montreal, the most exciting finals in the entire games were the volleyball ones. But, but you had Kamenich and you had uh, you know, the uh, Spinks brothers and you had all kinds of fantastic other athletes. But the volleyball is, is, is really pretty special. Mm-hmm. And in the uh, Winter Olympics? Winter Olympics, um, I kind of like the long track speed skating. Short track is fun, oh, but it's kind of like roller derby on ice. Uh, but but the, the speed and the grace and so on of, of uh, the, the long track speed skaters is really pretty special. Did you have anything to do with uh, adding rugby to the Olympics? Um, no, no, not in, in the sense of, of proposing it or anything like that, but, but having rugby sevens, uh, I thought was a great addition to the program. And it's uh, one of the advantages of it is, you know, it's got all of the elements of rugby, the speed and so on, but you can schedule matches 30 minutes apart. And, and it means that the players can play a tournament in the 16 or 17 days of the Olympic uh, window. Whereas if you had the, the 15s, with the great horses, uh, you know, they can only play once a week or whatever it is. Uh, so I, I think it's been a great addition. It's been, and it's been great for, both uh, men and women. Do you think just looking at us and spending the last 15 minutes with us, would you say that we are uh, borderline professional handballers? Because there's been a lot of uh, debate. We had Jay Cutler on, uh, former Bears quarterback, and he says that he could be a professional handballer. And we got the handball community very upset. Do you think we could, just looking at like us, you know, knowing that we're Americans, we probably played T-ball, we know how to throw a ball we could probably compete in the 2021 Japanese Olympics uh, in handball? Well, I, I, you know, I, when, again, when I came back from uh, Munich in Montreal, as the host was allowed to enter a Canadian team in every sport. And so I said, ignorantly, I said, you know, we're all pretty good at throwing and uh, I played squash and all that sort of stuff. So we, we could, we should get together and become the Canadian handball team. Uh, I think it helps to throw. I mean, it's an advantage you get in, in North America because we throw rather than kick balls. But uh, it's a tough, tough game. And uh, if you think you can just, uh, you know, put down your spikes and then step up there and score goals in team handball, think again. Okay. I don't know. I Fair. still feel like we could do it. But, again, that's probably, you know, you were in that same position as we are right now, and you learned your hard lesson. We have not learned our hard lesson yet. Um, going back to the uh, the Olympics that were supposed to take place this summer, what was the straw that really blew out the camel's back where the host committee said, okay, um, we're looking at the data, uh, we have to postpone? I, I, I think it was the, the combination of, of seeing the, the, the statistics around the world, not just in, in Japan, where, where that curve was not going down. It was level for a while or, or just – you know, incrementally rising. But in the last four or five days before uh, we made the decision, it had turned up and, and significantly up. So, you know, this this isn't going to be finished by July. It's probably not going to be finished by the end of the year. You know, the, the, the clock is running and we should we should make a decision in the interest of everybody, the Japanese spectators, broadcasters, athletes, everybody involved make it as fast as possible and then stick another pin in the paper and say, all right, here, here, reset to this. We appreciate you joining us. I have one last question. I think it's the, I, I'm sure you've like been on Twitter and you've seen every, every time you get in the news, have you thought about going by the name Richard? Do you get a laugh about that? Because people, Twitter has changed. I would imagine 30 years ago is a little different. Now it's uh it, it, you know, you, whenever you make a decision, you go viral, and I'm sure you've taken a peek and been like, "Oh, what's going on here?" And it's a lot of people just getting cheap jokes off. Oh yeah, no, no. I, eventually, some of these guys will get past their 14 year old giggles and uh, move on. <laughs> no, I hope so. But, but I yes. don't, I don't, I don't go on Twitter for that uh, for that reason. Somebody told me I was a week or so ago that I was trending. I said, "But what, what are you talking about?" And it's 
it's the old dick pound thing yeah yeah it's it's every time yeah every time it, you you have any kind of i feel like you've been in the news a couple times in the last few years and every time it happens it, you trend and i always wonder like Growing like growing up, were you ever like I'm just gonna go by Richard? Well, I did until I got to university, and and you know when you get to university and get sort of higher up in sports, you tend to get a you know you go by the, you're not Robert, you're Bob, and you know Richard became Dick, and uh, I mean it never yeah. the, the juxtaposition never occurred to me, but but uh, somebody there right. with uh, with with a big sweat at 14 years old that did. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. A lot of people just never get past that stage, and it's sad. I feel like if you uh, grew up in America, it probably would have, it probably would have, I think can, Canadians maybe are a little too nice where they didn't connect it and, uh, and, and like go after you when you were a kid. Oh, uh, well, anyway, I don't regard that as my problem. It's true. Sure, yeah. It's good. That's a good, and, that's a good perspective to in have fact, on it. I, w- I would almost say that it might help you out in, in your professional job because you are the perfect spokesperson, because if you ever want to get a message out, you just have to release your message and then let the rest of the world as a bunch of juvenile 14 year olds, they kind of will write up that story to make sure to include your name in it. And your message gets out there more than it would have before. So it's like almost a bonus for you. <laughs> yeah, I'm smarter than I thought. <laughs> yeah. Bad news doesn't seem so bad when it comes from Dick Pound. Like that's actually a fact you, cause everyone just goes to the name and they don't go to the bad news. So you, you got a life hack there. Oh, well you never know how it's going to work out. Yeah. Well, we appreciate you joining us. We appreciate. Oh, you. one last question. You are, uh, you did work as a tax, uh, attorney, right? Yeah. That's my job. Yeah. Okay. So our producer, 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 producer just, just does, doesn't do his taxes. Is that, is that wrong? Uh, <laughs> is that, it? that sort of, that sort of broke up. It, yeah. Our yeah. No, it's broke up. It's breaking up. It's breaking up. <laughs> there he is. Yeah. He it's just doesn't do his taxes. I'm losing it. I'm, I'm using, losing it. Yeah. <laughs> That's that's unfortunate. I don't know if that's the same in Canada, but I, I feel like you should do your taxes. <laughs> yeah, well, indeed. Well, it's nice. It's nice to have the problem. When is uh, tax day in Canada? Uh, normally, it's April thirtieth. Oh, okay. Okay. Is it pushed back this year? You guys, you guys are the fifteenth. Yeah, we're, well, yes, we're the 15th. if you choose to file, it's the fifteenth. Yes. Hey, our yes. producer yes. doesn't our always producer. follow through. Yes. Well, we thank you so much. We appreciate you joining us. I think you're about to break us. up again. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, we appreciate you joining us, and uh, we're looking forward to the Olympics in 2021. Super. Well, uh, thanks for having me on. It's been fun. All right. Thank you. Thank you. That interview with Dick Pound is brought to you by our good friends at ZipRecruiter. So right now, we can't be overwhelmed. We have to work. We have to work to keep our loved ones safe. We have to work to protect our communities. We have to stay strong. We have to work to stay connected, to stay focused. We have to work to inspire, to innovate, to build new solutions. But for all of this to work, we have to work together. And at ZipRecruiter, they connect employers and people every day, but today is different. They're partnering with first responders, government officials, the medical community, the innovators, and the manufacturing, transportation, and food distribution industries to make sure that they're, fun, they're finding the right people for the right jobs right now. ZipRecruiter is doing a great thing. They understand that we have to work together now. ZipRecruiter.com slash work together. Check it out. ZipRecruiter is doing great things in our community because right now we have to work together. Okay, let's get some segments. Uh, by the way, I just got this tweet. This is what I'm talking about. We need to do our best to bring sports back. Someone tweeted me, uh, during this coronavirus outbreak, remember to m- remain at least 10 feet away from others. If you're wondering how far that is, picture a b- – never mind. Never mind. Picture what? a Bears wide receiver and then imagine where Trubisky actually threw the pass. Oh, I was going to say 10 feet. picture a Packers wide receiver God and then imagine it. where Chris Conti is. Shut up. Shut up, everyone. <laughs> uh, we have thoughts and prayers, Joe okay? Buck. Everyone yes. keeps uh, tweeting Joe Buck their porn to announce. We have Joe Buck on the show on Friday. Actually, an awesome interview. Um, mm-hmm. We won't say any more than that, but an awesome interview, maybe with someone else as well. But how did Joe Buck not see this coming? Not I don't know. intended. Not he didn't. He did not see anything coming because he closes out of him before he announces him. I actually think that Joe Buck announcing porn would be hilarious. 
All I got to say yeah. is like, this is the most disgusting thing I've ever seen. Just play the Randy Moss clip over top of it and boom, yeah. announced. Duh. Yeah. I mean, Joe Buck announcing porn would be, would get us one step closer to sports being back in 2022. It'd be a uh, real shame if someone like went through a bunch of old Joe Buck games and then compiled, like cut different parts of it to make it sound it like to he porn. Was, yeah. Mm-hmm. Damn. That sounds like uh, no one has enough time for that, Hank, right? Because we're True. all busy right. going to yep. work every day. Oh, wait. Mm-hmm. Oh, someone has a lot of time for that. Be mm. real shame. Interesting. Be real shame. Real, real shame. Um, all right. We have uh, what was the other? Oh, the, the way, to stay, way to stay young NFL. The NFL confirmed today that Wild Card Weekend will have six games, if there is one, uh, which will be unbelievable. But the extra one of the extra games is being picked up by CBS, but also being broadcast on Nickelodeon so that it can reach a younger crowd. I love it. I love it. And who's <laughs> announcing that game? I don't know. Uh, Steve, uh, Steve from Blues Clues? Jack Collinsworth. Gronk has to be on that broadcast. Gronk, has <laughs> Gronk will be, absolutely be on that broadcast. Yeah. Gronk and, maybe Gronk and then just mic up Russell Wilson. Oh yeah, uh, our Philip Rivers. No, but Ru- Russell swear. Wilson. I feel like didn't he? I think he's like back to back to back Nick, you know, Teen Choice Award winner. So oh, he, I feel like he's hosted the show before too. Yes, yeah, so he would be perfect. He could get slimed yeah. in between quarters. That's gonna. Why are they? Why are they doing that to reach like six year olds that don't want to watch football with their dads? Well, I was gonna say it's just gonna piss off a bunch of dads who are like, I don't want to watch this on Nickelodeon. I mean, it would be cool. Here's the thing. What they're going to do is probably just put, like, a broadcast on Nickelodeon, which makes no sense. If they were going to do it and it was, like, a fun way, the score bug would be different. Like, it would be Gronk and, and Amanda Pines and Russell. Like, uh-huh. it would be – it'd be they would think totally outside of the box and make it, like, really fun and, like, ooze coming out of the corner of the TV, but they're not. They're not going to. They're just putting it on another station to boost the ratings. Instead of the Gatorade tub, it's just slime, and the coach just gets dunked in it after they win the game. Right. The, fla- the ref's flags are like at the bottom of a kiddie pool filled with green goop that they have to dig through to find. But what they're really doing is they're putting on Nickelodeon so that they can capture the audience of everyone who t- forgot to turn off their TV for whatever shows on Nickelodeon right now. Yeah. I'm Ed, Ed, and Eddie Hockley. That'd be cool. That would be cool. All right, should we do Mount Flushmore? Let's Shut do up, Mount hey. Flushmore to finish it off. Um, <laughs> Cartoon Network. I couldn't name one. I'm sure I'm going to get in that game soon, the Nickelodeon game. So I'll be back in it soon. Um, Mount Flushmore of Candy. Should we do it? End Let's the show. Go. PFC, go. you start. Okay. Um, my first one is no-brainer, Circus Peanuts. Mm. They suck. Universally regarded as the most trash candy to ever be invented. I don't even know why they're invented. I think they're just invented so that like dads can have candy that they know that their kids won't eat. But the dads don't want to eat either. But it's still, it's something that you know that your kids won't steal from you. Uh, yeah, that one is just, it really makes no sense that that exists. Really, really stupid candy. All right, my first pick, uh, Good and Plenty. Just another trash-ass candy. I don't, Good pick. I don't know why that exists. And... It just every time I've tr- I, I feel like Good and Plenty is one of those candies you have like once every five years and you're like oh yeah that's that's why it sucks I'll never yeah. have that again. I mean even right in the name it says it's not great it's good and there's I, I guess there's a lot of it there's a shit so we got a lot of stuff it's it's literally it doesn't really inspired confidence yeah it is the quantity over quality candy and it's the Jason Winton of candies it's it's the Frank Gore. Of candies and your Larry Fitzgerald of candies. You don't mean that. You don't mean that about Frank Gore. Yeah, I do. I mean it. Uh, Hank, your Frank picks. Gore would be circus peanuts if you know what I'm saying. Necco we didn't wafers. have enough. We didn't have enough dick jokes in this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> My first one, Necco wafers. Yeah, basically like a, a Smarties without the taste. Mm-hmm. And Rolos. Oh, I like Rolos. Rolos are trash. If you take ah. a bite of Rolos, I feel like every time I take a bite of Rolos, my tooth is coming out with it. But here's why I like Rolos. In defense of Rolos. No. No, hold on. Let me just tell you. I like to to uh, have fake portion control, and Rolos comes in the little fucking things, so you can basically be like, oh, I only had five of them. I'm good. Now, they're like caramel chocolate Mintos, right? 
disgusting. They're like they're like uh, uh, Reese's cups, but with no peanut butter, just caramel. Yeah, yeah. And then they come in the little sleeve, like Correct. the the penny Correct. roll looking. You can thing. like pop yeah. them. Yeah, I I agree with Big Cat. Those aren't bad. Yeah, they are. They are. They're bad. not that bad. Well, it's no, a good thing not. it's not Big Cat's list because it's my list. Oh, trash. oh okay, <laughs> okay. Um. All right. Uh. You know what's trash? Pixie sticks. Those are trash. It's just oh sugar. Oh my god. Mm, disagree. Disagree. Yeah, it's just sugar. No. It's not candy. It's just back sugar. In the, back uh, in the day, big cat. I used to. Uh, I, I know to, you did, Hank. You had I ADHD. Would, I would rob my CVS, so I'd get like ten packs of pixie sticks. Wait, actually, Rob. Yeah, it's a like, yeah. gun. <laughs> no, like I like there's a CVS down the street for me that was this like, is like basically. The, this is like the town G rated. <laughs> yeah, it was like before I got into like drugs and alcohol, like I just got off by like stealing candy from my CVS. Uh, I would take like 10 packs of it, empty out a Mountain, Bo- Mountain Dew bottle, which I would have drank, and then fill it to the top with Pixie Sticks. Okay. And then just I, have a giant bottle of Pixie Sticks. I just think I Pixie put the sticks, spike into Hank at a young age. <laughs> the Pixie Sticks are age. the laziest candy ever. They're not candy. It's just sugar. It's not candy. Uh, it, it's delicious. I like Pixie Sticks. Candy. You can You can snort them. You can lick them. You can pour them into other drinks and beverages. Mm-hmm. It's great. It's not great candy. candy. All right. What's your next two? Uh, my next, I'm going to go with black licorice. Okay. And malt balls. I don't hate malt balls. Are you talking about like, uh, like what whoppers. Is the, whoppers. Whoppers are good. I don't like, I you don't have like to put whoppers on there. You can't put malt balls because malt no. balls sound like an old person candy. Whoppers no, malt ball, no, 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 no. Malt. No, because whoppers has malt in it, but it's not a, a malt ball per se. No, those are whoppers. Malt balls is my choice. But that's not even a candy. Like no one knows where how you can get that candy. You get, you got to be able malt to get ball? the candy. Yeah, you, you're yeah, talking about I, whoppers. If you want to get malt balls, you just go to your local convenience store, the bulk section, and it's like ninety percent malt balls. That's. I mean, I think you got to put whoppers on there. My dad was a big say, malt ball guy. Whoppers. Whoppers. No, are but bad. He, I didn't even get brand name malt balls. All right, so here's uh, kind of in the <laughs> same cousin of of whoppers. Uh, is milk duds. I fucking hate milk duds. You've Ooh, never like eaten milk a milk dud that didn't get stuck in your teeth for fucking hours. The most annoying candy to eat. And I, it's, one of those, those. it's one of those ones that's like, it's like a dog. Like you're like, Ooh, this is good. And then you get trapped. It's like a fucking trap every time. Rolos. What you just said, it describes how I feel about Rolos to a T. Okay. I like milk duds, but I think I, I only really enjoy them because I had braces for a long time. And that's one thing that you're definitely not allowed to eat. And that you can't eat but if you, you have braces. So when you get them off, it's like, yeah, I'm free. I can eat all the milk duds that I want. Braces or no braces, they get stuck in everyone's teeth no matter what, and they're the fucking worst. You eat a milk dud, you're eating it for the next week. Hank? Uh, now and later. Okay, uh, I see that. Wait, I see that. Is that hard like, those hard are, as fuck. Yeah. There's like Starburst, right? Like worse Starburst? Mm, they're way like harder. stale and stale. Yeah. Always stale. Yeah, like they crack. Mm-hmm. Like you can't. They're just not, just not good. Yep. And uh, my last one, Raisinets. Ooh, disagree like on Raisinets. that. I like Especially Raisinets movie. too. Yes. Because it, it makes you feel like you're actually healthy snacking. Yep. Great movie snack. I would say Raisinets <laughs> and probably uh, Junior Mints. Maybe Junior Mints caps. delicious. Junior yeah. great, things, great things to eat during a movie. Mm. All right. My last one would be Smarties. Oh. Unless you can actually Smarties think they make you smart, but that's another one where it's like they don't put – Smarties Smarties is the candy that they had before the Depression. Like they Smarties were like, hey, like Pixie Sticks, circular you, Pixie Sticks. Yeah, it was before candy innovation. They're like, hey, here, ha- have some candy. It's just this Three sugar different colors. cap that you yeah. just fucking give them. Like kids yeah, sure. before the Dust Bowl, like during the Dust Bowl, were like, hey, what do you got left? I got a Smarty. Here, here we go. A little sugar left. I think those were just like what you found at the bottom of a bag of industrial sized sugar, like a big yes. bag of that, like it like coagulated together. And they're like, yeah, this is candy, but it's not. Mm-hmm. It's not candy. Okay, what's your last pick, PFT? Uh, my last pick, carefree gum. Carefree gum is the worst kind of gum that's ever. What existed. is that? It's not even it, candy. That's gum. Like, or we're not counting gum. Gum is I, not candy. I don't think it's so. gum candy. Gum is gum. We could do a mouth flush more of gum if we wanted. To. Yeah, we could do a mouth flush more of gum. We should. That's a separate thing. It I'm is. gonna Google this. Is gum candy? It's not. It doesn't matter what Google says. You. If, it, From a business you, perspective, hold on. Hold on. If PFT, if, PFT, put it this yeah, way. PFT, yes. put it this way. Thank Wait, hang on. Hank, there are 137 no, 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 billion no, 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 hits no, no, for his no, gum no, candy. Okay, Ravel. Okay, Ravel. No, no, okay, no, no, no. PFT, you say Hank. 
I'm, I need a sugar fix. Can you please go to the store and get me some candy? Yes. And I come back with a pack of gum? If you what said, would you, did you say? If, if you said, Big Cat, can I get a piece of candy? And I handed you a fucking piece of Trident? I would say thank you. No, at least no. it's, at least this Make is another double pick. bubble or carefree gum. <laughs> okay, yellow warheads. That's a decent pick. What about I atomic like, bombs? Those 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 suck. Or what, no, ato- what were they called? I like atomic warheads. Ato- I like no, the no, warheads no, a lot. That. What were the you red ones? The fireballs. Fireballs. Yes, those fireballs. suck. Yeah, I those, those suck. Too. Those are bad. <laughs> I should have said fireballs. But only psychopaths but, like liked fireballs. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like only someone be like, yeah, let me get a fireball. It's like what? I will eat any flavor of warhead, and warheads were like trade gold at the lunch table. Mm. But if you the second you bring out a yellow one, get out of my face. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything we missed. Any Gigi other? Fruit. Con- do you have any? Juicy fruit? No, juicy fruit. No, oh, no, no, juicy. This is juicy fruit. No, like, good no. pick. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you guys like? Um, what is it? It's almond joy, and then what's the other one? Mounds. I can't remember which one I don't like. Almond joy has nuts. Mounds doesn't have nuts. Heath Besides bars. They're the exact same. Heath bar is is the craziest one because Heath bars aren't good, but Heath bar ice cream is good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when it's it. crumbled, when it's yeah. uh, deconstructed, Heath Bar is really, really good. Yeah. What about a payday bar? Those things suck. Oh, so bad. It's just All peanuts. peanuts. Yeah. yeah. That's another one where it's like that's that was a pre nineteen like forty five candy. We're like, hey, you want some candy? Here, here's a bunch of peanuts I just smashed together and like put a little bit of caramel in it. Yeah, like well, when, you know, back when you got paid, like you could only afford a candy bar. Like, oh, I got an extra nickel. Yeah. <laughs> you know what it was? It was originally oh Henry bars, and then they said this costs too much to produce, so let's just make an O Henry bar without the chocolate coating on it, and that was a payday. Ah, okay. Thousand grand. Those are actually good though. Yeah, hundred grand. Um, grand, you're right. Grand. You're right on about payday. Introduced 1932. There you go. You can mm-hmm. tell the candy where it's like there's no candy innovation in this. This was just the candy that that like kids ate on Halloween when they actually dressed up like ghosts. Everyone yes. dressed. Have you ever seen like Halloween from like the 1930s? They they would dress up to actually like scare the fuck out of every living person on Earth, and it was terrifying. Yeah, that was like Earl Dutch Clark's favorite candy when he, <laughs> yes. was, when he was in the league. He probably did advertisements for it. It's like Marshawn Lynch ate Skittles, Earl Dutch Clark ate uh, Smarties and Paydays. <laughs> yeah, it's just like uh, Nelson Rockefeller just jizzed in a pile of peanuts and let it freeze together and then Ugh. handed it to me. Yum, Payday. Um, anything else? I'm trying to think. I think we got most of the bad ones. These are all the ones that you, if you put them in a bowl, they would just all be there at the bottom. We should try. Um, I was going to say we should do a science experiment with all these to see what truly is the worst, but we're never going to be able to see people again. That's not true. <laughs> That's not true at all. The draft's coming up. Also, stay woke on, did you see what J.J. Watt's doing? He's got tag? that game, Ultimate Tag. Yeah. He's trying to dovetail off the MJ documentary, like them bullying uh, ESPN into releasing that early. So JJ was like, hey, uh, Fox, is there a way that we can release Ultimate Tag early? And so probably tomorrow, Fox is going to be like, you guys asked for it. You got it. Ultimate Ultimate Tag tag. (laughs) with the Watt Brothers coming out next week. I could use some like terrible summer programming games. Why not? Throw it all out there. Rock and Jock. Give me a Rock and Jock marathon. Uh, all right, so Friday we have uh, Joe Buck, and we have the review of King of Kong Fistful of Quarters. So everyone, make sure you watch it. You can watch it on YouTube, so make sure you watch it. We're trying to book a guest from it. We shall mm-hmm. see. We it's shall than, see. It's better than I remember. It's, it's one of my favorite. Better.
It's Pardon My Take presented by Bar Stool Sports.